cooling of the pump and motor, especially at low flow rates, is also something that needs to be considered. Jet and centrifugal pump motors are air-cooled and require very little water flow to cool the impeller and pump. But a multi-stage submersible requires more flow because the motor and pump are both cooled by the water produced. A submersible motor running at full load amperage requires one half foot per second of less than 86 degree Fahrenheit water flowing past the motor. This minimum cooling flow is different depending on the diameter of the submersible motor compared to the diameter of the well casing or cooling shroud containing the pump. At full load amperage, a 4 inch diameter motor and 4 inch casing needs a minimum of 1.2 gallons per minute flow to remain cool, while the same 4 inch motor and 8 inch casing needs a minimum of 30 gallons per minute for cooling. A small diameter motor installed in large diameter casing or open water like rivers, lakes, and ponds requires a small diameter cooling shroud or flow inducer sleeve for proper cooling. A submersible pump motor controlled by a CSV can remain cool at lower flow rates than a VFD system. With a CSV there is no harmonic content to the power and the reduction in amperage or horsepower actually derates the motor load. A derated motor can operate safely even in hot water applications so it takes very little 86 degree or cooler water to prevent motor heating. A report from a major submersible motor manufacturer shows that when the motor amps decrease even slightly the motor load is derated and large motors can operate safely even at zero flow. As quoted, because the motor load is derated we have performed research with no flow and the motor has performed satisfactorily. In contrast, a submersible motor controlled by a VFD must always have the required half foot per second flow to remain cool, even when running at low speed and low amperage. The motor still requires as much flow for cooling as when operating at full service factor load. Therefore, a 6 inch pump motor in 8 inch casing controlled by a VFD requires a minimum of 45 gallons per minute to remain cool, where the same pump motor controlled by a CSV can operate safely with flow rates down to as little as 5 to 8 gallons per minute. Pump curves are also used to figure the differential pressure. Differential pressure is what determines the minimum cooling flow through the cycle stop valve. The same as when figuring back pressure, the static water level is deducted from the max pressure the pump can build. Using the previous example, the pump was able to build a back pressure of 108 psi. When using a 4060 pressure switch, the differential pressure is the difference between the max pressure the pump can build and the offsetting of the pressure switch. In this case, the max pressure is 108 psi and the pressure switch shutoff point is 60 psi, which gives us a differential pressure of 48 pounds of pressure. Because the back pressure from the CSV derates the motor load, it only takes about two tenths of a gallon per minute to maintain cooling flow and two horsepower or smaller submersibles. When there is 108 psi coming into the CSV and 60 psi going out, the 48 psi differential allows one gallon per minute through the fixed bypass on the smaller CSVs. This is actually five times more flow than needed to keep the pump and motor cool. With smaller pumps that only have 10 psi of differential pressure, the bypass in the CSV only allows 4 tenths of a gallon a minute for cooling. A larger pump with 130 psi of differential pressure allows about 1.8 gallon per minute through the CSV for cooling. Higher pressure submersibles may need 1.8 gallon a minute to stay cool, while low pressure submersibles and jet pumps only need 4 tenths of a gallon a minute to stay cool. Basically, the differential pressure automatically adjusts the bypass on the CSV to allow more cooling flow as needed for larger pumps and less cooling flow for smaller pumps. Larger cycle stop valves have a bypass size for an average of 5 gallons per minute because larger pumps need more flow for cooling. However, same as with the smaller CSVs, the low and high differential pressures can change the minimum flow through the CSV from 2 to 8 gallons per minute as needed. Big centrifugal pumps produce low differential pressure, but they only have one impeller and an air-cooled motor, so 2 gallons per minute 
is more than sufficient to keep them cool. Large submersible pumps create a high differential pressure so that the bypass in the CSV will allow up to 8 gallons per minute for cooling. Submersible, turbine, centrifugal, jets, and even pool pumps work the same way. If you need help reading a pump curve or any further assistance, contact us or see our webpage at cyclestopvalves.com.